M3 MacBook Pros are here and unlike last year, picking the right one now seems to confuse some people. So in this video, I'm gonna go over every Mac configuration and explain who should buy it, why and how to spend your money in the most effective way. Let's say I'm a typical Mac buyer. I open the official website, go to the MacBook Pro section and instantly see numerous options that all seem the same. $1,600, $1,800, 2000 3000 they all look exactly the same. So what's the difference? The cheapest MacBook Pro you can get now is the M3 14 inch. It costs $1,600 and this 14 inch MacBook Pro has the same amazing liquid retina display with ProMotion, six speaker setup and a versatile port selection. For this model, Apple uses the M3 chip. It has eight CPU cores and 10 GPU cores coupled with the 16 core neural engine. And if you have watched the event, you know that the M3 packs some amazing features. Thanks to three nanometers, it is now even more energy efficient and powerful than its predecessors. It also has improved graphics graphics now capable of doing ray tracing. It even comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD standard. Looks like a perfect laptop for $1,600, right? Well, it has only one flaw, eight gigabytes of unified memory. If you have watched our videos about 13 and 15 inch MacBook Airs, you know that eight gigabytes is not enough for any demanding workflow. Eight GBs fill up pretty quickly. And if you're trying to edit a video or export a ton of photos, don't expect crazy fast results. Of course, the 512 gigabyte SSD can make up for the lack of RAM, but only only if Apple uses the two chip configuration. So if you really want this MacBook Pro to be somewhat pro, I strongly suggest you to not skim on the memory upgrade and pay $200 extra for 16 gigabytes. This way for $1,800, you will get a really capable and powerful laptop with active cooling and gorgeous display because let's be frank, not every Mac user really needs all that power that M3 Pro gives. For the majority of people, the M3 will be more than enough for any task. And if you just want to browse the web and work with small documents, or you're buying a MacBook as a gift for your parents or younger sibling, the chances are they will be just fine with the M2 or even M1 MacBook Air. The M1 MacBook Air costs $1,000 and at that price, eight gigs of memory and 256 gigs of SSD is enough for most tasks. I know a lot of people that use the M1 MacBook Air and do heavy stuff on it without any issues. But if you want to really impress a person, I would advise you to go for the M2 Air. It is still really powerful, even with the base 8 gigs of memory, but it has newer design and overall feels more modern. What you definitely shouldn't do is max out the M3 MacBook Pro with 24 gigabytes of memory and even terabyte of storage, because if you do, it will cost more than the base M3 Pro MacBook. $2,200 is a lot of money for those specs. And trust me, you better spend those extra 200 on upgrading the M3 Pro MacBook Pro. And that is where it gets really interesting. MacBook Pros equipped with M3 Pro and M3 Max chips now have a new color, Space Black. Space Black promises to be a really good looking color, but until you actually see it with your own eyes in the store, or at least watch a review, silver is the way to go. Silver is a trusted color that's been around since 2009, so I have zero doubts that it will suddenly be less durable and scratch resistant. Space Black, not so sure. I need to to see it for myself. As for the specs, here everything is even more interesting. M3 Pro chip comes in two variants, bent and unbent. Bent chip has 11 CPU cores and 14 GPU cores. Unbent one has 12 CPU and 18 GPU cores. Wait, isn't that less than on previous gen MacBook Pros? It has 12 CPU cores, which is one more than M3 Pro, and also 16 GPU cores instead of 14. If you are the lucky owner of the M2 Pro, good for you. There is nothing to worry about. And if I was buying the M3 Pro without looking back at the M2 Pro, I wouldn't worry either. Apple's new design for the GPU and the CPU allows them to squeeze more power out of less cores, which also leads to greater efficiency. Will a regular Mac user be fine with an 11 core CPU? Well, yes. Even a real Pro user will be doing fine with that chip. I think that if you're buying a MacBook for university and plan on doing some advanced stuff, then you should do two things. One, get the base M3 Pro MacBook without any additional upgrades. And two, if you're getting value out of this video, subscribe to the channel and like this video. You will help us tremendously. Please and thank you. Is that $200 upgrade to the full M3 Pro chip worth it? Only if you know for sure that you need it. If you're someone who does video editing, works with 3D rendering, writes music, and does creative stuff on a daily basis, then those two $200 will pay
pay off in less than a month. But what about the RAM? If you are going for the M3 Pro chip, you have only two options to choose from, 18 or 36 gigabytes. 36 is a $400 upgrade and you should go for it only if you know for sure that your workflow requires a lot of video memory and RAM. This includes work with 4K videos with heavy encoding, really complex 3D, motion graphics and so on. If you are not planning on doing such things in the near future, don't waste your money on this memory upgrade. We have a fantastic video about RAM on MacBooks and if you are unsure which RAM to pick, be sure to watch it and then come back to this video. Better take those 400, divide them by two, and upgrade your storage to one terabyte. This will not only make your MacBook faster, but also give you more space for files and programs. And we both know how space-hungry some apps are. This way, for $2,200 or $2,400, you will get a really capable MacBook that will serve you for years to come. If you can spare 20 more dollars, I strongly suggest you buy 96 watt USB-C adapter that will make charge times faster. But wait, doesn't it come included with the full M3 Pro? Yes, but I suggest buying it even for the base M3 Pro. Anyway, that's not the point. We still have one more chip to cover, M3 Max. Truth be told, but if you're buying the M3 Max MacBook Pro, you most likely know exactly what you're looking for. You know how much RAM you need and how many cores, but I still feel like Apple made it so difficult to pick a configuration for this processor that an explanation is crucial. First of all, the cheapest M3 Max MacBook Pro 14 inch costs $3,200. And it comes with 36 gigabytes of unified memory and one terabyte of storage. If you want to save a couple hundred dollars, you can downgrade the storage to 512 gigabytes, but I strongly oppose that. This will make the SSD slower, decreasing the performance. The base memory for M3 Max is set to 36 gigabytes and the maximum to 128. But unless you pay $300 for the full M3 Max chip, you will be limited to only 96 gigabytes of unified memory which is still an $800 upgrade. Personally, I cannot think of any task that even the M3 Pro will not be able to do, but even the base M3 Max is a complete overkill. 36 gigabytes of RAM is enough for everything, and one terabyte of SSD is plenty for most apps. But if you really want to do serious work and are ready to pay over three grand for a laptop, why not spend $400 extra and go for two terabytes, just for the sake of it? I'm telling you, no matter which M3 Max you choose, it will be a real monster. What's interesting is that when you decide to pay $300 extra for the unbent M3 Max, the lowest RAM size goes to 48 gigabytes. This way, for $300, you get 12 gigabytes of unified memory, more CPU cores, and more GPU cores. I hate to say it, but it sounds like a good deal. I only wish that I wasn't expected to pay over $4,000 for a laptop to get these savings. And just for a perspective, fully maxed out. 14 inch MacBook Pro with M3 Max, 128 gigabytes of memory, and 8 terabytes of storage costs almost $7,000. I'm sure there are plenty of people for whom the M3 Max will be a tool that will make them much more money than this. Choosing the right MacBook configuration is not easy, a lot of options to choose from, many places to make a mistake, but you can always do the right thing and watch our video about typical MacBook buying mistakes that you can avoid, and a guide to choosing the right amount of RAM will go nicely after that. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Show us your love.